Hi, I'm Colin Shannon, a technical writer in the documentation team at cPanel. Today, we're going to explore reverse DNS for IPv4. So, a little background before we get started. Forward DNS uses A records to convert domain names to IP addresses. An A entry points a host name or domain to an IP address, which allows other computers to find your server on the internet. Reverse DNS, or RDNS, uses pointer records to convert IP addresses to domain names. Pointer records are the opposite of A entries, since they point an IP address to a host name or domain. You might also hear pointer records referred to as reverse DNS records. RDNS also identifies the IP address for a diagnostic tool such as Traceroute, and you may need to use RDNS to get past basic anti-spam filters. You see, some hosting providers assume that generic RDNS entries that don't match your primary host name are sources of spam. If you set your main IP address's reverse DNS entry to match your host name, and you set the RDNS entry for every IP address through which you send mail, you'll be able to avoid these filters. Now, in order to create an RDNS zone file, you'll need to have reverse DNS records added to the authoritative server for your IP address. Authoritative name servers are DNS servers that hold your domain's information, such as A entries and pointer records. Your server probably isn't authoritative for your IP address range, and any changes to your server's DNS name servers don't take effect if your server's name servers aren't authoritative for your IP address. It's probably your hosting provider who has the authoritative name servers. Contact your hosting provider to get them to set up the appropriate RDNS entries. After your hosting provider sets up RDNS for you, you can see the reverse DNS entry in a couple of different ways. One way is to use a reverse DNS lookup website to enter your server's IP address and view your hostname. For demonstration purposes, I'll use remote.12dt.com to do this. Let's enter our IP address in the Enter IP Address text box and click Look Up. Now you can see what domain that your IP address resolves to and its top level domain. You can also connect to your server via SSH on the command line and run either the host or dig commands to see the RDNS entry. I'll run the host command first. This one's useful if you just need to find some basic information. The output shows the RDNS entry and the host name. Now I'll run the dig command just to show what that one looks like. This command returns the complete RDNS entry including the reverse DNS zone domain that belongs to it, the pointer record for the domain, and the start of authority record. This one's useful if you ever need that information to troubleshoot DNS for some reason. Okay, now we're ready to create an RDNS zone file. Let's log in to WHM, scroll down to DNS functions, and click add a DNS zone. The add a DNS zone interface will appear. Enter your IP address in the IPv4 address text box. Now, you'll need to enter something unusual in the domain text box. Your IP address without the final octet in reverse with in-addr.arpa appended to the end of that octet. Since our IP address is 67.227.147.213, the domain text box entry will be 147.227.67.in-addr.arpa. You can associate the RDNS entry with an account if you want, or you can not select anything to have the system own the zone. And click Add Zone. A confirmation message will appear. Let's go back to DNS functions and click Edit DNS Zone. The Edit DNS Zone interface will appear. Let's select the domain that we just added from the list and click Edit. A new interface will appear. Scroll down to the Add New Entries Below This Line heading and enter the final number of your IP address in an available text box under the Add a New Entries Below This Line heading. Next, select PTR as a record for the domain. Finally, enter the host name that corresponds to that IP address, remembering to add a trailing period, and click Save. A confirmation message will appear. There, now you've created an RDNS zone file. 
You can test the entry with the methods that we demonstrated earlier in this video, or you can go ahead and move on to configuring other parts of your cPanel and WHM server. For more information about cPanel, the hosting platform of choice, visit us on the web at cPanel.com or follow us on Twitter at, at cPanel. You can also access our documentation from the links in the description below the video. Thanks for watching and happy automating!